So I wanted to talk today about how 90% of what you see on YouTube about filmmaking is more or less false. It is people running around with cameras, posing for Instagram photos and generating content for no really anyone but themselves. They're not working for clients, they're not making money apart from their YouTube revenue. They really are just cosplaying filmmaking. Now, I personally don't have a problem with that. If people wanna spend their money on cameras and go out and shoot slow-mo images of people backflipping into waterfalls, that's their right. It's a free country, good for them. They're enjoying themselves, they're making films. I think that's wonderful. It only becomes a problem when other people see that at lifestyle and then think that that's what filmmaking is. Only to buy camera lenses, lights, all kinds of gear, try and do this for a living and then be thoroughly disappointed. So today I'm gonna to talk about the reality of filmmaking and why it's not all slow motion walking out of the sunset with a camera on your shoulder. The first big misconception out there is that the filmmaker is always the one with the camera on their shoulder. They've got some kitted out red in a cage with a fancy cine zoom on it and that that's what takes up 90% of your filmmaking time. The reality is that 90% of your time as a filmmaker is sitting at your computer, emailing people, calling people, trying to put together a team, trying to find a cast, trying to find a location. And that's only after going through all of the process of getting a client, negotiating the budget, buying your stuff, getting insurance, all of the mundane production tasks that have to be done in order to make a film, any type of film, and make money from that film and make sure you don't die or get sued along the way. Now, I don't fault YouTubers for not talking about this stuff because they've probably never done it unless you're gonna derive your entire income from your YouTube views for which you need millions and millions of views. The rest of the filmmaking industry has to rely on clients providing value for other people who are willing to pay for that value. Now, every profession gives a unrealistic portrait of themselves in social media. Filmmaking is by no means unique in this manner. But as a filmmaker who's been doing this for 25 years and all kinds of different countries in all sorts of different roles, I feel like I wanna to speak to what the reality of running a production company, being a director, being a producer, and being a cinematographer is. Most of what you see on YouTube, which is you know, blocking and lighting and shooting a scene, is the very small part in the middle of the film production process. And you won't get the opportunity to do that unless you learn all about the start and the end. Start being the pre-production, putting together the team, casting your film, getting locations, raising the budget, allocating that budget for the best possible opportunity to do something special. And then the edit, the post-production, and the delivery to whoever the client is. A lot of people think they can just hire a producer to do all of this legwork for them. But it doesn't work like that. The producer is the one that hires you and they're only gonna hire you as a filmmaker if you have a track record. And the only way to get that track record is to do small jobs yourself, learn the ins and outs in filmmaking, find clients, deliver value to them, get them to pay you and talk about you well so you get other clients. There is this image on social media of the filmmaker as the person with the camera on their shoulder out there shooting you know, waist deep in water or with a building on fire, all the fun, exciting, sexy stuff. They got hired for five, six, seven hundred dollars a day to come in and point the camera in the direction that the director has told them to. And afterwards, they have no contact with the film at all. And no matter what your background is, whether it's writing, directing, producing, photography, marketing, in order to make your stories come to life. But I think everybody needs to be clear that the 5%, maybe even 1% of the actual process of making a film. Another thing that no one tells you about filmmaking is just how detail oriented you have to be to not totally screw up. You can put together the hundreds of pieces, literally hundreds of pieces of the puzzle, of the camera, of the lights, of all the actors, everyone knows where to go, everyone has the right wardrobe, everyone has the right shoes, and yet, if you show up to a location, the location manager or the owner got the day wrong and the uh, gate is padlocked and you can't get in, you can't shoot anything. All of that organization is in vain and you, you take a hit 
as a filmmaker because you've lost time, you've lost money, you've lost your reputation, you've lost your credibility to the people that you're working with. I have had shoots where a single screw has totally shut down production and someone has to go buy another one or go and get it. It was the screw that attached the tripod plate to the camera. For some reason it was missing, it had fallen out and you know, 15 people had to stand around and while one little screw needed to be found, bought, procured by any means possible. I identify as a creative first and foremost. I do not like uh, the, the small little details and yet I've learned that if you neglect them, they will totally shut you down. So I always have redundancy built into my shoots as much as humanly possible. And when we couldn't shoot that scene because we were missing the screw, we rehearsed and then shot another scene um, with a different camera in, a, in the same location from a different part of the film while we waited. People will tell you it's terrible. Most of the time you want your friends to tell you that it's good so that you have the strength to, to make another one. If everyone tells you it stinks and everybody's honest, you'd never get out of those first four or five projects that are always gonna be bad. The important thing is that you don't lie to yourself. If you study the history of film, a lot of great filmmakers that you admire, this happened with George Lucas on Star Wars, it happened with Ridley Scott on Blade Runner, it happened with Christopher Nolan Memento. But what the only thing that's important is they found enough of an audience to allow the filmmakers to keep making films because in the end, it's the process of making the film that you are gonna get your greatest reward from. Once the film is done, you will have watched it so many times that you will never wanna see it again. From the very first assembly cut to the sound mix and 700th time of color grading, I have watched that film again and again and again. It's what I do. Check out my courses on Canon Masterclass if you're interested in the nuts and bolts techniques of filmmaking, especially for Canon cinema cameras. Check out uh, the video here uh, about what a producer actually does and how you can find one or become one. And I'll see you next time.